What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Kick Ash Podcast. We are back here today to discuss some big business and all things AEW, stemming out of the big show that we had on Dynamite this past Wednesday and a couple articles that have come out in regards to that big signing and maybe a look ahead to the Dynasty card that we'll be getting, um, a new pay-per-view that AEW added to the lineup here. The I believe the date for Dynasty has been revealed as well. I thought it would have been right here on the graphic, um, but it's definitely sometime in April. I'll get that pulled up here. Um, but for whatever reason, my graphic is failing me right now. Um, but that is not the most important news today. The big business that we're here to discuss, of course, is the signing of Mercedes Monet, 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 um, to AEW. That, of course, was the big focus on the show on Dynamite last Wednesday. The ratings have come in as well. We do have a couple articles regarding um, if she's possibly the highest paid woman in, in professional wrestling now. So we'll be getting into all that. But I just want to thank you guys, as always, for checking out the show and sticking with me here. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, anything like that, feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, no, I'm not that pressed when it comes to stuff like that. Um, but just let me know um, your feedback on anything or if you guys have a different opinion on anything. I really like seeing some of the comments that you guys submit. Um, and just what sticks out to you guys and what you guys feel the need to comment on, which is pretty entertaining and, and pretty fun for me, too. Uh, I, I love the interaction. That's the main reason why I do this. Uh, like I've said multiple times, this is like a, a little wrestling diary for me. Um, but it's cool to meet new people and interact with you guys as well. So feel free to drop a comment anywhere you listen or on Twitter at Kagesh Podcast underscore or on my personal page there at A-S-H-M-A-N-N-S. But now with all of that out of the way, we will definitely be getting to the big business here. Uh, it's just fun. I, I love a good pun and a good play on with words. But um, like I said, we'll be going into pretty much just focusing on the AEW um, Dynamite uh, event that happened this past Wednesday. Full disclosure, I did not see Rampage nor Collision. So that's most likely why, right? <laughs> um, I could read the results, but I'm, I'm you guys know I'm, I'm pretty honest with you guys. If I don't see something, I'm not going to talk about it. Um, or at least reference it, but nothing too major happened on Rampage or Collision um, that I saw, um, which is, it's kind of upsetting too, at least for Collision, you know what I mean? That's a whole other story for a different day, but Collision and Rampage for that matter, because if you think back on it, CM Punk debuted on Rampage, on the second ever episode of Rampage. So to think of the the concept and the idea behind those two shows um, and, and maybe how it's not quite turning out as originally planned. Um, it must sting a little bit, but in a lot of ways, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, you know, it's, it's kind of like flooding a W and, and things like that. I don't think it's necessarily doing that. I just feel like it's, it's maybe spreading the focus out, maybe one show too many. Um, but again, in the same token too, I, I kind of appreciate it because it does give the wrestlers and the talent and the workers, more nights to work on, you know what I mean? So it's kind of uh, six in, in one hand, half a dozen in the other, as, as some people say. But um, yeah, so I, I just wanted to at least touch on the ratings, um, and especially if you guys have listened to me in the past, you guys know I, I'm not really one that's big on ratings, but I, I thought it was interesting. The uh, final number that ended up coming from the big business episode on Wednesday, which was March 13th, of course, the final number came to 801,000 viewers. It looks like the ever um, coveted rating in that demo that they that they craved, that 18 to 48 demo came in at a 0.27. Again, for me, I don't really care about ratings. I know some people do. I bring it up just to kind of gauge um, and just to get a, a threshold of, of the, of, I guess, like the water level is, is what you could also call it. Um, I just, again, like, I don't, if you know me, you know, I love numbers and statistics and stuff like that. So that's why it's interesting to me, but I don't look at that number. I'm like, oh, that's a flop, you know, like, oh, you know, like that the hype wasn't real type shit. You know what I mean? Because to me, that that's not the case at all. To me, it's going to be a slow and steady build for AEW to get back to that million, to get to the 1.5 and the possibly 2 million, you know, if, if it ever reaches that, that bracket. But to me right now, I would just say don't cater to the to the fans that are already there. Branch out more. And I think that's what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like I I think that's what they're doing with signing Mercedes Renee. And with that being said, I'm gonna bring up the article here. 
um, which just kind of references if, if she was the possible highest or is the possible highest paid women's wrestler out there. And if she is good for her, you know what I mean? Like get the bag is, is what I say. Um, to me, the day I sit here and worry about what someone else is getting paid is the day I need to look back out on, on my perspective and what I'm doing in my life. Um, I just want everyone to be happy. You know what I mean? Type is as corny as that sounds. Um, and, and to be a wrestler and I'm not going to get on this bandwagon right here, but, um, right now, but, um, just from the very little that I know on the outside looking in, like it's, it's expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're literally betting all on yourself insurance wise, like and anything you can think of where you, it may be built in with your current employer, just think of how different it may be for an independent contractor for anyone who has that title in that regard. So I would just kind of keep that out, keep that out there and in, in the back of your mind when you're thinking of, Oh, this person's way overpaid. Now you may see a number here, a number be like, Oh, like that's an insane amount. And it, that's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? Like some of these athletes contracts that I hear and see, like they get paid 40, 50 million for not even a full year of work. It's just like, what but you have to think of all the things that we don't see as well that goes into it the training the conditioning the constant life and the and the livelihood that you have to maintain you know what i mean so when i hear numbers that she could be getting paid uh with this says possibly four to five mil a year like that's a lot you know what i mean like that's that's a lot but if that's true good for you bro give good, good for you girl get get that bag because they don't have a built-in 401k and stuff like that. That's like automatic with an employer that a lot of us do. So, and, and that's just one example. So whatever she's getting, get that bag. But um, per PW Insider, more has come out over the, um, all the, then this is my backup. I'm reading this from WrestleCurious.com. So shout out to them. And they are referencing and, and sourcing out to PW Insider here. So just for those uh sourcing purposes don't want to jip anybody but going back they say now per T pw insider more has come out over the all elite wrestling debut of mercedes monet first the report notes that both wwe and aew were willing to offer an eight figure sum to the former iwgp women's champion meaning that it's now highly likely likely that she is the highest paid female wrestler in the history of wrestling PW, there's a quote here, PWInsider.com is told by multiple sources from both WWE and AEW that each side had pursued, it, had pursued, yes, and were willing to commit to deals that amounted to eight figures in total over the course of the deals, which would be record-breaking numbers for a female performer in professional wrestling, and now makes her likely the top-paid female performer in the history of the business, which I don't have the, the number here, but Prior to this, uh, I believe it was Charlotte Flair who had just got the biggest deal. Um, so if this is true, then she now tops whatever Charlotte got paid. So pretty, pretty interesting if, if that is true. <laughs> um, they continue to say it said that AEW had been holding discussions with Monet for about 18 months before she signed with WWE coming in later to try to convince the former Sasha Banks to rejoin the company. PW Insider write that the decision was made to go with all elite wrestling as Mercedes felt as if it held stronger potential for both herself and women's wrestling overall. PW Insider again was quoted this, um, as saying they were told in the end the final factor in the decision making as to where as to where to go on Monet's part was which destination would allow for stronger potential, not just for herself, but for additional future for additional and future women in professional wrestling. Russell Pierce go on to say, interestingly, as well as it being a place that she'd been before, it said that WWE's schedule was also a factor in Monet's decision-making process, as committing to a return to her former employers would limit her ability to take on other projects, such as her previous work in acting. PW Insider also revealed that the door has been open for her to explore fashion and music opportunities while outside of WWE. And it's not referenced here. Um, then they just go on to state uh, that she does have an aspiration to help uh, AEW and specific the women's division grow and to take a global. And that is something that she is taking very seriously. Um, but they do reference here that she has started to break through in other media, such as acting. PW Insider state that there is actually a belief among some in AEW that she could be their John Cena or The Rock and that she draws in viewers from other avenues thanks to her work in different industries. 
So with that being said, um, I think it's it's still a little early to see if she's going to be the next John Cena or The Rock, just because those are massive shoes to fill for anyone, male or female. Um, but I think with the debut and, and the positioning that they held her in and how it was very CM Punk like, but taken to the next level, in my opinion, with how AEW presented Mercedes coming in and presented her pretty much as the star that she is and believes that she is. And I think that's a big thing with, with Mercedes, in, in my opinion, is you believe it. You know what I mean? In a lot of ways, it's kind of funny because to me, she is a better and more in, in entertaining heel, I would say, just because, and that's that's in that that's not even fair because a lot of wrestlers uh have or you could say that for a lot of wrestlers rather you know what i mean because you have more freedom and more range to go and say certain things but i think with her she may be a good candidate for one who kind of rides that tweener role more or better than others i would say in the sense that she can very easily like turn the cockiness up to a level 100 you know what i mean but she does very good at, at kind of teetering back and forth. She gives you the vibe that, yeah, she's the shit. And, yeah, she she knows she is. And she believes in herself. And she knows what she can bring to the table. And she knows her worth. But then again, the same token, too. You you look at her and you kind of get this vibe that, yeah, she, she is X, Y, and Z. And she is the CEO um, in, in her own mind. But it doesn't, it doesn't take away from the genuineness of her and and the realness and the often off, I don't want to say yeah she is authentic and, and that may be the best word but there's another word I'm, I'm thinking for searching for here but I'll just say the authenticity that she brings I'm, I'll stick with that is is probably the thing that's most intriguing to me and why I think she's very prop very interesting in that tweener role and probably one of the best candidates like I said um to be cast in that role because normally um like i said if you guys have listened to me in the past you know i'm a very black and white person i like knowing who to cheer for and knowing who to boo um but with monet she like i said she she gives off that that vibe of oh yeah she's cocky and she knows it and she she has this different level of of confidence to her but she can very easily not rub it in your face and and that authenticity i'll just stick with that that you feel and that she kind of exudes it, it overshadows the cockiness, or it can. So that's why I think that depending on which way you want to go with her, and of course right now I, I definitely agree with them bringing her in as the good guy, you know, and having her play up to especially her home crowd and just the markets that are going to be excited to see her for the next couple months. And then go from there, you know what I mean? Like I said, I think she's better casted as a heel, but I could very, very much ease, uh, very much see her rather kind of teetering back and forth. Um, but I think as, at least for the for six, eight months, and as long as you can, ride full and ride strong with her in that baby face role. <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially if you do want to have her venture out into other platforms and other and other media outlets, you know what I mean? She does, and I think she recently posted within maybe the past couple weeks that she's produced and, and maybe even recorded. I know she was involved in a record that she, I'm going to say she's saying on, I could be wrong on that, um, but that she at least produced or in that she was involved in. So she's definitely dabbling in the music industry and, and whatever that may end up looking like. Again, I don't have the specifics here, but I know I definitely remember reading something in that regard. Obviously she's already dumped, jumped into the acting field. So I think the sky's the limit with AEW and Mercedes Monet. And like I said, I think the way they presented her on Wednesday by having her open the show, even the beginning with having the car pull up, knowing that it's big business, you know. And I like that it wasn't a limo or anything standard like that. It was just a flashy, nice car. You know what I mean? Nothing too crazy, though, either. Um, but something that's believable that she'd be escorted around in. You know what I mean? And I love that they gave her ample time. I think it was, what, 15 minutes at the start of the show to go out there and address why she's there. Thank the crowds, get that out, or the fans, get that out of the way. And now move on to business, you know, no pun intended. I hate to keep saying the, that, that word or those two words, but she really kind of needed to do what CM Punk did. Come in there, be grateful, be thankful for the fans, be thankful that you're here in AEW, you know what I mean? Get that off your chest and then move on to the next. And I like how they opened the show with her and then closed the show with her as well, having her come in for the main event. Um, and, and it looks like she's 
wanting to jump into the TBS title role, which I didn't even think of, um, which <laughs> I don't know if that just shows that I forgot there's so many titles um, or I just automatically assumed she'd go for the number one women's title. But I like that she and Okada, uh, for that matter, are going a different route and not just going straight for the number one gun, straight for the world heavyweight champion, straight for the women's heavyweight champion um, for that regard. Um, so I, I like that. I like the difference there. But with that being said, hold on one second, guys. All right, there we go. I wanted to get this other article that I had here regarding um, another big, big talking point in a, a face of, of dynamite. And speaking of face, I, I want to know your guys' opinion and let me know what you guys think in the comments or on Twitter, wherever you're, uh, whatever's easiest for you guys. Who's the face of AEW? If you had to put money on it right now, who would you say is the face of AEW or who could you see being the face of AEW in 2024 going forward? Would you say it's going to be a Mercedes Monet? Could you see it being Okada? Could you see it being Will Ospreay? Or maybe even a Swerve Strickland? I don't think with all these uh, new acquisitions coming in that Swerve is going to be pushed to the back burner, and I certainly hope not. But I think this, the the focus is still on Swerve in the media future. I think they're doing a nice job with building Will Ospreay and then having him slowly become the number one babyface. And Swerve is still kind of in that, yes, he, he did – kind of jump into that baby face role as well. But I think him and Wilsper are going to have a nice battle for maybe the face of AEW. And I I do still think that whenever the uh, match is made official, whenever it's going to be Joe versus Swerve, I think Swerve is going to win as long as it's that one-on-one -on -one match. And I do have my money on Swerve defending against Will Ospreay in London, England, and, and um, at All In, rather, this summer. So I am still thinking long-term for that. And that's why I think possibly it may be a mixture maybe of will osprey and swerve being the the focal point for aew as a whole as a company going forward and i hope so um i'm actually kind of surprised okada isn't more slotted in that role and again he's in my well obviously in the in the heel position so he's going to be kind of hamming it up with the lead the young bucks and going after the continental classic championship which again was an interesting route that i wasn't quite expecting but i like the change in the in the kind of Swerve, no pun intended. Um, yeah, I don't know if that would be a pun, but anyway. <laughs> um, but speaking of Dynasty, we do have the brackets prepared for the Tag Team Championships. And speaking of that, uh, very sad that Darby Allen's not going to be able to climb Mount Everest this year or make an attempt to. Uh, there, he did confirm, I believe it was on Twitter. I heard on, on a podcast, I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, Maybe it was Solomon Monster. I think it was Solomon Monster. Um, but that he broke his foot, I believe, in like two or three places. So shout out to Darby. Get some rest, my guy. Take it easy and just get, you know, like I said, take some rest and just enjoy some time off and enjoy the fruit of your wages because you you deserve it, my guy. Um, and, and Mount Everest will always be there next year. You know what I mean? But with that being said, the we do have the uh, listing here. So we have the Young Bucks facing off against Private Party. We'll have the Undisputed Kingdom facing off against a wild card team, uh, the first wild card team. We have the Best Friends facing off against the Don Callis family, which would be a wild card wild card match. And then we do have Ricky Starks and Big Bill facing off against Top Flight. Uh, two more here, FTR versus wildcard team number two, and then the infantry versus the House of Black. Um, and with that being said, this this article is a couple of days old. Excuse me, so if I missed any updates, I apologize for that. But I, like I said, I didn't see collision. But in regards to AEW Dynasty 2024, the debut of that pay-per-view itself, I almost said PLE, but it is in fact still a true uh, pay-per-view for AEW. Uh, we do have the dream match. I almost did quotes, but it, I think that's safe to say it's a, a dream match, depending on how long you've been dreaming. Um, Will Ospreay facing off against Brian Danielson is official for AEW Dynasty, and I think that's that's just going to be a show stealer. Ah, here we go. April 21st, 2024, guys. This is when Dynasty will be. Um, it didn't it slipped my mind and I just didn't even see that little sentence there earlier. So apologies for that, but that is the official date for AEW dynasty again, April 24th of this year. So far we have will Osprey confirmed facing off against Brian Danielson and much more will be added. I'm sure we'll get Joe versus swerve. Obviously the tag team match, the finals there and who knows what else I'm sure possibly the debut match of Mercedes Monet, um, maybe against Willow. We'll see how that goes, although she did interfere to help save Willow. So we shall see.
But thank you guys so much for checking out the show, sticking around. Let me know what you think. As always, feel free to let me know what you think of this episode. Like I said, in the comments, either on YouTube or on Twitter at Kickash Podcast underscore or on my personal page at A-S-H-M-A-N-N-S. Until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe and enjoy wrestling. <laughs>